Hello students, uh, I am Dr. Nilo Fakari and today we are going to discuss the Brechian Epic Theatre. Uh, we have already discussed Bertolt Brecht and his life and biography and his famous works and the kind of works, techniques he used to use in his dramas. So here I have begun this uh, with this quotation from Peter Brook who is a theatre um, uh, director. He says, Brecht is the key figure of our time and all theatre work today at some point starts or returns to his statements and achievements. So let us begin. Epic Theatre, which is known in German, Apicic Theatre. This is a theatrical movement arising in the early to mid 20th century from the theories and practice of a number of theatre practitioners who responded to the political climate of the time through the creation of a new political theater. Epic theater is not meant to refer to the scale or the scope of the work, but rather to the form that it takes. Epic theater emphasizes the audience perspective and reaction to the piece through a variety of techniques that deliberately cause them to individually engage in a different way. The purpose of epic theater is not to encourage an audience to suspend their disbelief, but rather to force them to see their world as it is. So this is completely different from the dramatic drama or the traditional drama, which used to make the audience as a part of the spectacle or the part of the tragedy or the part of the drama so that they could be one and they could, you know, arouse the catharsis of the emotions which they already have into their hearts, as we have already discussed in the uh, theory given by Aristotle. But with Brecht or with Epic Theatre, this is not the same. same. The purpose of Epic Theatre is not to encourage an audience to suspend their disbelief. They do not believe everything that is shown on the stage. The things which are shown on the shown on the stage are only artificial things. They are just being represented to you. Uh, the things which are already prevailing in the world, but they are represented to the audience so that the audience can see them and understand the problem which are lying behind uh, the whole drama or the whole scene and try to resolve those pro problems after seeing that drama not that sit uh, sitting in the drama and crying over whatever is happening and feel relaxed after finishing of the tragedy uh, so here i have taken a picture of the setting of a brechian drama which is you know we uh, we can easily see that there are benches uh, capped and the uh, picture which is shown the set which is, has been made is of a house but it doesn't look like a house we can easily feel that yes this is a house this is a set of a house not exactly the house so epic theater is a form of didactic drama presenting a series of loosely connected scenes that avoid illusion and often interrupt the storyline to address the audience directly with analysis argument and documentation Epic theatre is now most often associated with the dramatic theory and practice evolved by the playwright director Bertolt Brecht in Germany from the 1920s onward. Its dramatic antecedents include the episodic structure and didactic nature of the pre-expressionist drama of the German playwright Frank Wittekind and the expressionist theatre of the German directors Erwin Piscata, with whom Brecht collaborated in 1927, and Leopold Jessner, both of whom made exuberant use of the technical effects that came to characterize epic theatre. Brecht's perspective was Marxian, and his intention was to appeal to his audience intellect in presenting moral problems and reflecting contemporary social realities on the stage. This was the intention which was lying behind the uh, whole idea of epic theatre. He wished to block their emotional responses and to hinder their tendency to empathize with the characters and become caught up in the action. Don't be a part of the action. Don't sympathize with the actors. Rather, think over the problem that is being presented and the, all the dramas of uh, uh, Brecht were uh, you know based on some social problem moral pro moral problems of the society of the age to achieve this end he used alienating uh, alienating or distancing effects to cause the audience to think objectively about the play to reflect on its argument and understand it and to draw conclusion okay so this is called the alienating f act uh, uh, effect or distancing effect here is a picture from a drama fear and the misery of fear and misery of the third reach okay so we can see that how the dramatist or how the director has you know uh, kept these uh, 
uh, artist in a certain uh, on certain distance kept them into you know uh, it looks very artificial so we understand what they are about to say but we do not be a part of their life now let's move to the alienation effect alienation effect also called uh, a effect or distancing effect or in German which is known as Warfram Dunks effect or V effect idea. Uh, this is central to the dramatic theory of the German dramatist by director Bertolt Brecht. It involves the use of techniques designed to distance the audience from emotional involvement in the play through resulting reminders of the artificiality of the theatrical performance. So the performance in the theater should be artificial. They should be or rather they should be reminder of artificial after such uh, certain intervals so the audience do not get emotionally involved with the drama or with the theater and for this the artist use the dramatist use few techniques here is a scene now you can see the lights here you can see the curtain or you can see the set that yes this is a set this is not the reality this is not the location exact uh, this is a scene of the setting from a scene in Mother Courage in Ihre Kinder, Mother Courage and Her Children, which is staged by Bartol Brecht for a production in 1949 by the Berlin Ensemble. <coughs> uh, staging example of such techniques in include explanatory captions or illustrations projected on a screen, actors stepping out of the character to lecture, summarize or sing songs and stage designs that do not represent any locality but that by exposing the lights and ropes keep the spectators aware of being in theater here is another example from the same drama you can see a uh, screen going uh, behind in the rear and there is a curtain rope for the curtain and the artist is um, he is also you know carrying a, he has held a rope in his hand that makes us feel that yes this is not real this is a drama something which is uh, presented before us the audience's degree of identification with characters and events is presumably thus controlled and it can more clearly perceive the real world reflected in the drama okay so the audience their uh, imagination is in con under control of the director Brecht conceived the alienation effect not, not only as a specific aesthetic program but also a political mission of the theater. Inspired by the philosophies of J. G. W. F. Hegel and Karl Marx and by Victor Schlossky's theory of Austrian uh, Nye, uh, which means making it strange or defamiliarization. So, do not make it familiar, make it defamiliar. Brecht regarded his method as a way of helping spectators understand the complex nexus of uh, historical development and societal relationships. By creating stage effects that were strange or unusual, Brecht intended to design the audience an active role in the production by forcing them to ask questions about the artificial environment and how each individual element related to real life events. So to relate the events which are happening on the stage with the real life events and asking a question every time when you are moved into the, a new environment. In doing so, it was hoped that viewers would distance themselves emotionally from problems that demanded intellectual attention. So there are the social problems which, do, which does not demand any emotional, any emotion, rather it demands intellectual solutions for the problems. <coughs> Brad's epic theater was in direct contrast to that encouraged by the Russian director Konstantin Stanislavski in which the audience was persuaded by staging methods and naturalistic acting to believe that the action on stage was real. Okay, so Brecht, the German uh, dramatist, is <coughs> opposite than the Russian director Stanislavski. Influenced by the convention of Chinese theater, Brecht instru instructed his actors to keep a distance between themselves and the character they portrayed, right? Do not go into the character. Otherwise, what do we say? Be in the character. Just enter into the character. It's not that. Okay, so they were to disregard inner life and emotion while emphasizing stylized uh, external action as signs of social relationship. Gestures, intonations, facial expression and grouping were all calculated to reveal overall attitudes of one character toward another. 
Now let's move to the term epic theater. How does it come from? Why do why does uh, Brecht call it an epic theater? The term epic theater comes from Erwin Piscator, who coined it during his first year as director of Berlin's Volksbühne. Uh, Piscator aimed to encourage playwrights to address issues related to contemporary existence. This new subject matter would then be staged by means of documentary effects, audience interaction, and strategies to cultivate an objective response. Here, I have taken a scene from the Cossackian chalk circle. Again, you can see that this is not real. Okay, Epic theater incorporates a mode of acting that utilizes what Brecht calls gestures. Uh, one of Brett's most important aesthetic innovations prioritized function over the sterile dichotomous opposition between form and content. So, what is this? Let us discuss gestures. This is an acting technique developed by Brecht. It carries the sense of a combination of physical gestures and just for all attitude. So, physical gesture in combination with attitude. It is a means by which an attitude or single aspect of an attitude is revealed in so far as it is expressible in words or action, as it is it can be expressed in word or actions. So gestures as the embodiment of an attitude carries at least two distinct meanings in Brett's theater. First, the uncovering or revealing of the motivations and transactions that underpin a dramatic exchange between the characters. And second, the epic narration of that character by the actor, whether explicitly or implicitly. In first sense, that of an, uh, anatomizing the character, a justice reveals a specific aspect of a character rather than his metaphysical, subconscious or other psychological dimension. Okay, So, the aspect which is surficial, not in the metaphysic, not in the subconscious, which is not the psychological. A gesture makes visible a character's social relation and casuality of his behavior as interpreted from an historical materialistic perspective that in such and such situation, how a person will act, how a person will behave. <clears throat> in the second sense, the actor's attitude as embodied in acting as an act of epic narration the showing that is shown in the showing in Brett's turn of phrase. Brett says that it is showing, that is already shown in the showing. Okay, To express something which has already happened into an artificial way. Brett refers to the political basis from which an actor interprets his role and its place within the storytelling scheme of production as a whole. So there is a political, some political scheme behind everything, behind all this that Brecht talks about this. Now let's discuss what are the techniques of the alienation effect to create the alienation effect or the A effect or the distancing effect or the V effect on the stage where you can uh, distance the audience or uh, separate the audience from the artist of the stage. So here are a few points. The narration needs to be told in a montage style. Techniques to break down the fourth wall, that is the artificial wall, which is not seen between the audience and the uh, stage artist. Making the audience directly conscious of the fact that they are watching a play. Okay, Three wall to create a stage and there is a fourth wall or a setup which is made in such a way that you makes to which is invisible and the wall is invisible and audience start feeling that they are not sitting in the stage, rather they are a part of the play. Okay, so one should not be a part of the play. That fourth wall, that invisible wall should be broken down. Then the use of a narrator. Okay, as in earlier dramas, we had the use of chorus. Here it's narrator because this character is outside the character framework. Narrator is someone who is outside the story and they change the relationship with the audience. Use of songs or music, songs and dances are like to provoke a more obje object viewing, particularly if you are watching it uh, serious and not a uh, uh, schmaltzy environment of a typical music. This is a scene from uh, Brett's Ball. Okay, the artist is using music here. So, next is the use of technology. If you project ideas onto a screen in a slide show or even have a still image there throughout each, ski, each scene, it makes the audience analyze more th thoroughly. Then, the use of signs. 
uh, if an actor starts each scene with a placard uh, naming the scene or you have a board which is changed at the start of each, each scene you are reminding the audience about the fact that they are watching a play okay this is again uh, from the mother earth and her daughter now use of freeze frames or tableau um, uh, this is obviously unnatural in the simple sense of that word and should make the audience think about the frozen moment. Like here, I have uh, finished with this slide. Brech is sitting here and uh, there are, you know, you can see uh, boards, you can see the exception and the rule, the type, something which is written behind. So to give it an artificial effect. So what Brech wants from the dramatist or the from, or from the theatre directors, um, or the artist is to create an alienation effect and to separate the audience from the uh, emotions so that the audience can think logically and think over the problem that is shown into the drama and can act accordingly uh, can think when you leave the drama when you leave the theater you should be in a position to think over the problem not over the drama uh, artist that yes he acted very well or uh, the so and so actor was acting well or so and so actor was very you know uh, emotional and I could feel one with so and so artist this should not be them so uh, that is the theory of epic theater by Bertrand Brecht so that's all for now hope you have enjoyed the concept or the theory uh, let's meet in uh, next lecture you can ask your questions in the, the comment box or you can directly message me on my whatsapp number thank you thank you very much have a nice day